Hey, I just wanted to quickly plug that if you guys want any tutoring, some new slots have opened. If you look in the description, there's a link to my physics and maths tutor profile in which I do tutoring on there. Hello and welcome to another episode of the A-Level Cookbook. Today we're going to be doing AQA A-Level Maths Paper 1 from June 2021. Or November, sorry. Okay, so the first question says, state the set of values for x which satisfi satisfies the inequality x minus 3, 2x plus 7 is greater than 0. So whenever you get questions like these, when it's quadratic inequalities, what you want to do is you want to write out your roots, which are going to be um, 3, the opposite of this, and obviously the opposite of this, divided by um, 2. So that's going to be um, minus 7 over 2. Next, you want to decide whether it's greater than or less than. So what I do is I always draw a little sketch like this. So we've got minus 7 over 2 here, and we've got 3. This is a quadratic, because if you multiply these, you get x squared plus something x plus something, or minus something. And you can see that this times this is positive. So you're going to have a quadratic that's like this. Next, what you want to do is you want to see where it is greater than 0. So you want to see where the y, sorry, is greater than 0. So that's above what 3 and less than minus 7.2. Therefore, x has to be greater than 3, but it has to be less than minus 7 over 2. Given that y equals ln 5x, find dy by dx and circle your answer. So when you're differentiating any function where it's like, you know, 5x or whatever, a shortcut, you can obviously do the chain rule, but the shortcut is you write the differential in your times by the derivative. So for example, if I had like 2x plus 7 to the power of 10, you would normally times by the power, minus by the power, and then times by the derivative. So the derivative of this bracket is 2, so it'd be 2 times the old power 10, 2x plus 7 to the power of 9. Right? So in this question, when you're differentiating an ln, it becomes 1 over whatever the thing in the bracket is. So it's going to be 1 over 5x, but you have to times by the derivative of the bracket. So it's going to be times 5. So you're going to get 5 over 5x, which becomes 1 over x anyway. So it's going to be this one here. If it was something like um, ln 7x plus 3, then all it would become is 1 over 7x plus 3 times by the derivative of this bracket, so times 7. Right. A geometric sequence has a sum to infinity of minus 3. A second sequence is formed by multiplying each term of the original sequence by minus 2. What is the sum to infinity of the new sequence and circle your answer? So. In this first sequence, it's going to be a r to the n minus 1. What they're now doing is they multiplied every single one of them by minus 2. So they're not really changing very much except the fact that they're doing this and they're putting minus 2. So minus 2 times minus 3 gives you 6. Millie is attempting to use proof by contradiction to show that the result of multiplying an irrational number by a non-zero irrational number is always an irrational number. Select the assumption she should make to state her proof. So what they're saying is that irrational times um, rational, that's non-zero, obviously equals irrational. So if they're doing it by proof by contradiction, they need to assume that ra irrational times rational equals rational, therefore giving you that. Okay, so the line L has this equation, 3y minus 4x equals 21, and they told you that p is this point here, 15, 2. They say find the equation of the line perpendicular to L that passes through point p. So First of all, if it's perpendicular, we're going to need the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So I'm going to rearrange this to 3y equals 4x plus 21. Divide both sides by 3. So y equals 4 over 3x plus 21 over, 21 over 3, which is 7. So we know the gradient of this line is going to be 4 over 3. So the gradient of the new line, so the, the, um, the perpendicular line, is going to be the negative reciprocal, so minus 3 over 4. So now we can work out the equation of this new line because it passes through p. So y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So whenever you're working out the equation of a straight line, you need to use this formula. So it's going to be y minus 2 equals minus 3 over 4, x minus 15. I'm going to times everything by 4 just to make life a bit easier. So 4y minus 8 equals minus 3x plus 45. And then we just rearrange it to whatever form they really want. So um, they haven't really specified what, so I'm just going to write it as 4y plus 3x equals uh, 53. There you go. Hence, find the shortest distance from P to L. So we need to find out where these two lines intersect and then work out the distance from those. So 3y minus 4x equals 21 and 4y plus 3x equals 53. So I'm going to take this one and tidy up a bit. So 3y equals 21 plus 4x. So y equals 7 plus 4 over 3x. And then I'm going to substitute that into here. And that will eliminate our y's. So 4 lots of 7 plus 4 over 3x plus 3x equals 53. So that's 28 plus 16 over 3x plus 3x equals 53. 
So 28 plus, and then I'm going to simplify that. So 16 over 3 plus 3 is 25 over 3. X equals 53. So 53 minus 28 gives you 25. So 25 over 3X equals 25. Divide both sides by 25 over 3, and you should get X to be 3. So now that we've got that, we can work out Y. Just slap it into you know, any of these equations, and you get Y equals 7 plus 4 over 3X which is going to be 7 plus, 7 plus 4 over 3, that, which is 11. So now we've got x equals 3 and y equals 11. So that's a point of intersection. So now what we need to do is we need to find the distance of the line from p to here. So p, as we were told in the question, is 15, 2. And the point of intersection now is what uh, 3, 11. So the distance is going to be the square root of um, 15 minus 3 squared plus um, 2 minus 11 squared, and that should give you your answer, so, which gives you 15. Okay, so the ninth term of an arithmetic sequence is 3. The sum of the first n terms is Sn, and S21 equals 42. Find the first and, so the first and common difference of these sequences. So whenever you're doing questions like these, always write out algebraically what we've got going on here. So the ninth, so, for any arithmetic sequence, you've got a plus n minus 1 d, and that's u n. So this is the ninth term, so the ninth term is going to equal a plus 8 d, and we've been told that that is 3. They've also told you that the sum of this, so s21 is 42. In the formula booklet, they tell you that sn equals n over 2, 2a two plus n minus 1 d. So s21 in this case would be 42 equals 21 divided by 2, 2a, two plus n minus 1, so that's going to be 20d. All right, so now we've got something, we've got some stuff to work around here. So we've got two statements. We've got this, and that we've got a plus 8d equals 3. So now it's just a case of simultaneous equations. So what I might do is I'm just going to get rid, I'm going to tidy this up a bit. So I'm going to say that, um, so 42 times 2 is 84. So 84 equals 21 times 2, so that's 42a plus 21 times 20, 420d. And then we've also got here that a plus 8d equals 3. So what I could do is I can make this a equals 3 minus 8d, and now substitute that into here. So we've got 84 equals 42, 3 minus 8d plus 420d. So 84 equals 42 times 3 is... 126 minus 42 times 8, that's 3360 plus 420d. And if we tidy that up, we get 84 equals 126. Uh, so minus 336 plus 420 plus 84d. So that means that 84 minus 126, so that gives you 84d equals minus 42, so d equals that divided by 84, which gives you minus a half. So we've got d, and then we know that a plus 8d equals 3, so that means that um, a plus 8 lots of minus a half equals 3, so that means a equals 7. A second arithmetic sequence has the first term minus 18, so a equals minus 18, and the common difference d is 3 over 4. The sum of the first n terms of this is tn, and it says find the value of n such that tn equals sn. Okay, so the previous question, it's carrying on from that. So in the first one, um, the second first arithmetic equation, a is 7, d is minus a half, and now this is a second equation where you've now got new, the second a is uh, minus 18, and d is 3 over 4. So sn equals n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1, d. So for the first sequence, that's going to equal n over 2, so 2a, 14, plus n minus 1, d, n minus 1 times minus a half, which is a lot of nasty brackets there. In the second sequence, it's going to be n over 2, 2a, so that's going to be um, minus 36, plus n minus 1 again, times d in this case, which is, what's the common difference again? 3 over 4. So we've got some really nasty stuff going on here. 
Now we want to find it so that these two equal each other. So Tn is the second one. So this is Tn and that's Sn. So we equate the two. So n over 2, 14 plus n minus 1 minus a half equals n over 2 minus 36 plus n minus 1, 3 over 4. So this is absolutely clapped. We can divide both sides by n over 2 to get rid of n. So 14 plus n minus 1 minus a half equals um, minus 36 plus n minus 1, 3 over 4. So now we can tidy this up. We get 14, so that's going to be minus a half n plus a half equals minus 36 plus, uh, what's that, 3 over 4 n minus 3 over 4. So let's collect all our like terms. So I'm going to add the n's. So I'm going to get 14 plus a half equals minus 36 minus 3 over 4 plus, we're adding the n's to both sides. So 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2 gives you, so it's going to be plus 5 over 4n, and then I'm just going to collect all the other things. So 14 plus a half plus 30, so 40 plus a half plus 36 plus 3, plus 3 over 4 gives you 205 over 4 equals 5 over 4n. Divide both sides by 5 over 4, and that gives you n equals 41. That gives you n equals 41, not 14, whoops. So the equation x squared equals x cubed plus x minus 3 has a single solution where x is alpha. By considering a suitable set change of sign, show that alpha lies between 1.5 and 1.6. So in order to be able to solve this, we need to make it so that it equals 0. So we're going to rearrange this to get x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap this number in and see if we get a, sign, a change of sign. So if I do f1.5, I get minus 0 0.375, and that's less than 0. And if I do f1.6, you get 0 0.136, and that's greater than 0. So that means that the root of this equation has to lie between these two numbers. And there you go. And it says, show that this equation can be rearranged into this form here. So we've got x squared equals x cubed plus x minus 3, and they say they want it to be in this form here. Well, they've divided everything by x, so let's, let's start off with that. So if you divide everything by x, you get x equals x squared plus 1 minus 3 over x, and then you just need to rearrange it till it gets to the form that they want. So x squared equals um, x, so it's going to be x minus 1 and then plus 3 over x, so minus 1 plus 3 over x, not too shabby. And then it says use the iterative formula. So they usually do this where they ask you a question to rearrange it and then slap that slap numbers into the iterative formula. So we've got x n plus 1 equals the square root of x n minus 1 plus 3 over x n. And it says start with 1.5 to find x 2 and 3 and then find your answer to, um, to uh, four decimal places. So what you do is you put 1.5 in and then see what comes out. So if we put 1.5 into this, we get square root of 1.5. Uh, minus 1 plus 3 over 1.5. So it's helpful to use the a answer button. And you get root 10 over 2, which is what? 1.5811. That's um, x2. x3 is going to be uh, 1.5743. And then x4 is going to be 1.5748. And that's two four decimal places. When you're doing these iterations, you should do them, sorry, with um, one extra decimal place before you finally, you know, Thing here, because when you put this in your calculator, you get 1.57477, which to four decimal places is that. Okay, so it says, hence, deduce with an interval of width 0 0.001 in which alpha lies. So we've got 1.5748, and they're saying 0 0.001. So the root probably lies between 1.574 and 1.575, if we're going with that. And if you test it in the calculator, in this original equation, you should be able to get that. So if I do, um, so if I take this and put those numbers in, I should get uh, one point, and that's going to be answer cubed minus answer squared plus answer minus three, and that gives you a negative number. And if I put the other number in, it becomes positive. So you've checked checked it, and it works out. So there you go. That's how you do that. Okay. So given that nine sine squared theta plus sine two theta equals eight, show that eight cot squared theta equals two cot theta minus 1 equals 0.
Right, so whenever you have a question where you've got anything like a sine 2 theta, 4 theta, 8 theta, multiples of 2, you need to use double angle formulae, okay? So sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. That's your double angle formula that you should just know. Obviously, you can derive it, but like it's easy just to memorize it. So now we've got 9 sine squared theta plus um, 2 sine theta cos theta equals 8. So now we're on some pretty good line here. What, what can we do next? Okay, so you should think about all the identities that you know off the top of your head. That may help. So you should know that cot squared theta plus 1 equals cosec squared theta. And that's what we're going to use here. We're going to divide everything by sine squared theta. Because if we do that, this becomes 9. That becomes, so that sine's disappeared and that becomes that, but you've got cos over sine. So that's 1 over, that's the inverse of tan. So you can have 2 cot theta here. And that's 1 over sine squared theta. So that's going to be 8 cosec squared theta. So we're getting there. We've got a cosec, and we now know this identity, so we can say that 9 plus 2 cot theta equals 8 lots of cot squared theta plus 1. And now we just need to tidy this up until we get to the bit that they want. So 9 plus 2 cot theta equals 8 cot squared theta plus 8. Um, collecting all the light terms and moving stuff around, so 8 cot squared theta minus 2 cot theta minus 1 equals 0. And there you go. So now it says, hence solve this in the interval, blah, 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 right? So now we've got 8 cot squared theta minus 2 cot theta minus 1 equals 0. So we need to now obviously solve this between this interval. So this is a disguised quadratic. You slap into your calculator or you do, you know, whatever method you use to solve quadratics and you should get cot theta equals minus 1 over 4 or cot theta equals a half. So that means that, remember cot is 1 over 10, so tan theta equals minus 4, or tan theta equals 2. So now we're going to solve each possibility. So I'll start with tan theta equals 2. So tan to the minus 1 of 2 equals, and what they want it in radians, sorry, so make sure your calculator's in radians mode. That gives you 1.107. We're doing it from 0x to 2 pi. So you need to draw a cast diagram. So C, A, S, T, and this is going to be in the all and the tan quadrants. So 0, 90, 180, 270. 360. So we need to rotate around this until we get all the numbers that we want within the range. So all and then and then 10. So in x has to equal 1.107. That's our first one. And then it's got to be, well, sorry, this has to be in pi. So it's going to be pi over 2. That's going to be pi. It's going to be, and you know, whatever, so on. So pi plus that. So pi plus 1.107 gives you 4.2. Two, four, eight, and then obviously we fall out of our range. So we've got all of that solved here. Now we need to look at the tan theta equals four. So whenever you've got a negative, what you need to do is you need to inverse tan the positive value. So tan to the minus one of four, which gives you one point three two five eight, and then you need to draw the cast diagram, but you need to mirror everything because it's negative. So instead of here and here. Your lines are now going to be here and here. So we're going for starting from here, we're going there, and starting from here, we're going there. So to get this first angle, it's going to be 180 or pi minus whatever you just worked out. So the first value is going to be pi minus that, which is 1.8157. And then you're going to do 2 pi minus that because we're going from here to here, like so. So if we do that, your other value should be 4.9 4.9574. And then it says, um, give your answers to one decimal place. So x equals, let's list them all out. So 1.11, 1.82, uh, 4.25, and then 4.96. Okay, so in this next part, it says solve 9 times squared theta, blah, 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 whatever, right? So we've solved before. So in, it's, it's building on the previous question. So our previous solutions, I'm just going to write them down again, are 1.11, 1.82, uh, 1.82, sorry, one point. So 4.25 and then 4.96. So it says solve this in the interval. So all they've done is if you compare it to the original equation, they've replaced x with this. So now 2x minus pi over 4 equals, you know, 
and so on, blah, 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 blah. So all you do is you pick the numbers that fall within the range and then just, you know, solve it. 2x minus pi over 4 equals 1.11. So 2x equals 1.11 plus pi over 4, which is 1.895. And then you divide that by 2, and you should get 0 0.947, which to 1 decimal place is 0 0.9. And then you just repeat it with all of the values that fall within pi over 2. So it should be less than 1.5707. If you do that, the only other value you get is 1.3. And that's how you do that. The table below shows the annual global production of plastics P measured in millions of tons per year for six selected years. So we've got year 1980, 1985, 1990, blah, 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 whatever. And, you know, you've got five year intervals and P is increasing by this, whatever. It's thought that P can be modeled by P equals A times 10 to the KT, where T is the number of years after 1980 and A and K are constants. Show algebraically that the graph of log 10 against P should be linear. We've log 10 P, so we're going to do log 10 P equals log 10 and then a times 10 to the kt. Now the log will say that if you times two things in brackets, that's the same as saying adding them together. So you're going to get log 10p equals log 10a plus log 10, 10 to the kt. And then what you can do is you can bring this power down. So you get log 10p equals log 10a plus kt log 10, 10. If you do log 10, 10, that's just 1. It cancels out. So you get log 10 P equals log 10 A plus KT. And if you plot a graph of P, so if your straight line graph is Y equals MX plus C, if you're doing P, that's your log, so your Y axis is going to be log 10 P, and you're plotting it against T, which is going to be, you know, KT in this case. So your gradient in this case is actually K and that's t, and you know, you've got your plus c, which is going to be plus log 10a. So there you go. And then it says complete the table below. So I mean, you can just put the numbers in. And it says plot a graph, and you can plot the graph. It says hence show that k is approximately that, and so if you plot this graph, you shouldn't appreciate that y equals mx plus c, so the x is t in this case, what's times to it is your m, the gradient, and then your plus c is here. So your y-intercept is log 10a, and your gradient is k. So all you do is you work out the gradient of this line, and then it says find the value of a. So you find your y-intercept, and then you just do 10 to whatever the y-intercept is. Using the model with k equals 0 0.02, predict the number of tons of annual global production in 2030. So p equals a times 10 to the kt. That's what they told us. And the starting year is 1980. t is going to equal 2030 minus 1980, which is 50 years. And then you just slap it into this equation here. So we, we've established from the previous question, sorry, if you use the data, whatever, blah, 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 you should get A to be 75. Obviously, I didn't plot the graph, so whatever. But yeah, so now you just slap it in, so you get P equals 75 times uh, 10 to the 0 0.02 times T, which is 50, and that should give you 750. Okay, so it says using the model with K equals 0 0.02, predict the year in which P first exceeds that. So P equals A times 10 to the KT. Hit with a point where it hits 8,000, so 8,000 equals an A, which is 75 times 10 to the 0 0.02 T. We wrote before, using our straight line graph, the logging stuff. So you know, we've got a bit of a shortcut there, provided you've done the question, that is, probably. So you should get log 10 P equals log 10 A plus K T. So log to the base 10 of 8,000 equals log to the base 10 of 75 plus um, 0 0.02 T. Uh, and then, you know, you, you do log 10, 8,000 minus log 10, 75, all divided by 0 0.02, and that will give you T, and that will give you an answer of 101.4. And then they obviously want to predict what year that is, so it's going to be 1980 plus your answer, which gives you 2081 plus 0.4, but you can't have 0.4 over a year according to this model, so it's going to be 2082. Give a reason why it may be inappropriate to use the model to make predictions about future annual global production of plastics. So, um, I mean, over time, I'd hope that the you know, world pr produces less plastics. So th this is assuming that the rate of plastic production is staying the same. We're always going to keep making the same sort of proportion of plastics as each year goes. But we might decide, you know what, maybe we don't want to make plastics in the future. So that's why. So it says, given that y equals 10x, use the quotient rules to show that dy by dx equals sex squared x. So obviously, the first thing we need to appreciate is how to get it into quotient rule. So quotient rule only works when y equals u over v. And in this case, it's going to be sine x 
over cos x. The quotient rule says that dy by dx equals v du over dx minus u dv over dx over v squared. So in this case, u equals sine x, v equals cos x. So whenever I'm doing trig equation differential stuff, I always write sine x, cos x, minus sine x, and jump from them. So this differentiates to that, which differentiates to this, this integrates to that, and so on. Just makes life a lot easier. So du over dx equals cos x, v du over dx equals cos squared x, and then dv, sorry, yeah, dv by dx equals negative sine x, u dv over dx equals negative sine squared x. Therefore, dy by dx equals v du over dx minus u dv over dx. So v du over dx is going to be cos squared x minus u dv over dx, which is going to be minus minus sine squared x over v squared, which is going to be cos squared x. So that leaves us with cos squared x plus sine squared x over cos squared x. And you guys should remember that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So it's going to be 1 over cos squared x, which is the same as saying what sec squared x. So it says the region enclosed by the curve y equals tan squared x and the horizontal line which intersects the curve at these points is shaded at the diagram below. Show that the area of the shaded region is this and fully justify your answer. Okay, so as a general rule of thumb with these kinds of questions, you want to look at how it links to the previous part. Okay, when you're doing these two-step questions where they ask you to differentiate or integrate something and then the next question's something like this, it's probably that you need to use the first part of the question. So you need to think like that. So in this case, we need to find the area enclosed by this. So if we get the area under the curve, that gives you this. And then we want to obviously find this. So what we do is we find the area of this whole rectangle here and then subtract the area under the curve out of it. So you can find the area of a rectangle relatively easily. All you do is you slap these into the equation to get these coordinates here, which are one and one. So the area of the rectangle is going to equal the length times width. So that's going to be one as the height, sorry. And this is going to be the difference between these two. So it's going to be 1 times pi over 2, because pi minus pi over 4 minus minus pi over 4 gives you that. So your area of the rectangle is pi over 2. So you've got the first step of that sorted out. Next, we want to find the area under the curve. So the area under the curve is going to be the integral of tan squared x dx from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. But hold on a second. You can't do that. You don't know any way of doing that. You shouldn't anyway. So we need to think about identities that can help us get closer to this solution. If you look at the previous question, we were told that if we differentiate tan squared x, we get sec squared x. So dy, so y equals that, differentiating that gives you sec squared x. So we need to think, is there a way that we can link this to sec squared x? And that might make it a lot easier. And yes, there is. Because one of the identities you should know is that tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. So obviously now we can rewrite this to get tan squared theta equals sec squared theta minus 1. So now your integral becomes pi minus pi over 4, pi over 4, um, sec squared theta minus 1. And in the previous question, they told you that th if you differentiate tan x, you get this. So if you integrate it, you're going to get the opposite. So this integrates to tan x. Sorry, it should be x, not theta. Tan x, and then obviously minus x, because you're integrating that. And that's from pi over 4 to minus pi over 4. And then all you do is you just slap it in and then subtract the two from each other and you should end up with, you know, uh, let, me, let me do that now. So 10, so you get 1 minus pi over 4 and then minus whatever happens when you put the other, you know, minus pi over 4 in, so minus pi. It's going to be this. So you should get 1 minus pi over 4 plus 1 minus pi over 4. And that gives you 2 minus pi over 2. But we're not done yet. That's just the area under the curve, this bit here. So we need to subtract it from the whole tri the whole rectangle, sorry. So the whole rectangle's area is pi over 2. So you get pi over 2 minus 2 minus pi over 2. Yep, and that gives you pi minus 2 if you type. A curve C passes through the point with the coordinates 1C, and the gradient is given by this. So I like to just write it down just so I get my head around it. 1 over 6, x, y, all squared. So it says show that C intersects the coordinate axes at exactly one point and state the coordinates at this point and fully justify your answer. So we need to integrate this, but we need to separate the variables first. So, so we get dy by dx equals 1 over 6x squared y squared. So then we can divide both sides by y squared and we get x. So dy equals 1 over 6x squared 
y squared dx, and then divide both sides by y squared. So we get y to the minus 2 dy equals 1 over 6x squared dx. So now we've separated the variables. We've got dy's and dx's on either side, so you can integrate both of them. When it comes to differential equations like these, you can treat the dy and dx as if they're like, you know, um, species in like a fraction. If you integrate that, you're going to add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So you get minus y to the minus 1 equals, and you're going to add 1 divided by the new power. So 1 over 18x cubed, and we've got a plus c. Now we need to figure out what plus c is. Well, they've told you that the coordinates of one of the points on this curve is 1 and 6. So that must mean we can put in y equals 6 and x equals 1. If we substitute that in, you get c to equal, this is going to be all minus 1 over 6 equals 1 over 18 plus c. Therefore, c equals minus 2 over 9. So now we've got an equation. Uh, we've got the equation um, minus y to the minus 1 equals 1 over 18x cubed plus, sorry, minus 2 over 9. Now the question says is that show that it intersects the axes at exactly one point and state the coordinates of this point. Well, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So we've got minus 1 over y equals 1 over 18x cubed minus 2 over 9. So it says it only act in intersects one of the coordinate axes. So it's either the x, sorry, the x or the y coordinates. So if it intersects the x axis, then that means y equals zero. And if it's here, then that means x equals zero. Y cannot equal zero. So the only possibility is that it is x equals zero because you can't have, you know, you, you know one over zero is undefined. You can't have one over zero. So it can't be that one, it has to be here. And then obviously it's asking you to solve it, so it therefore it intersects x-axis. So all you do is you've got minus 1 over y equals, uh, so that's all going to become 0 minus 2 over 9. So then, you know, you just do the negative reciprocal, y equals 9 over 2. Bang. So then it crosses the axis at 0, 9 over 2. Okay, so the equation of the curve is x plus y squared equals 4y plus 2x plus 8. The curve intersects the positive y-axis at the point p. Show that the gradient of the curve at p is minus 3, 2. So if it's intersecting the y-axis, it's crossing here like this, whatever. So that means that at this point, y equals 0. So the intersection is going to be at p, 0. And we want, they obviously want us to find that. So we need to, first of all, expand that bracket. So expand this bracket here. So uh, x plus y, x plus y, so you get x squared plus x plus 2xy plus y squared, and that equals 4y plus 2x plus 8. So we need to use implicit differentiation to solve this. So wh what that means is all you do is you differentiate everything as you normally would, but you would just put a dy by, a d a dy by dx on everything. So this would become, that becomes a 2x, this bit we're going to have to use the um, product rule on, that's going to become um, 2y dy by dx, and that equals 4 dy by dx plus 2, and that plus 8 is gone. So we need to take this down here and do this down and do the product rule on it. So u equals 2x, v equals y, du by dx equals 2, v du over dx equals 2y, uh, dv by dx equals dy by dx, because it's 1, you're differentiating it. So remember when you differentiate y's, you need to put a dy by dx on it as well. So u dv over dx equals 2x dy by dx. And that, that, then therefore, the dy by dx, the differential of this, is going to be 2y plus 2x dy by dx. So this whole thing differentiated now gives us 2x plus 2y plus 2x dy by dx plus 2y dy by dx plus so it equals 4dy by dx plus 2. That's a lot going on here. I'm going to collect all your like terms. So 2x plus 2y minus 4. So that's going to be 2x dy by dx plus 2y dy by dx uh, minus 4dy by dx. And then you collect everything else. So that's going to be, that's going to equal um, 2 minus 2x minus 2y. And then what you want to do is you factorize everything. So dy by dx, 2x plus 2y minus 4 equals 2 minus 2x minus 2y. So that means dy by dx equals 2 minus 2x minus 2y over 2x plus 2y minus 4.
Okay, so now we've got the we've got the gradient function of this, but we need to actually know what x is. So they've told us that it crosses the x-axis at point p, so y equals zero here, so we can solve what x actually is. So we've been told that x plus y squared equals 4y plus 2x plus 8. Well, now we've been told that y equals zero. We're trying to find out what x actually is. It's going to equal x squared equals, so that becomes zero, plus 2x plus 8. x squared minus 2x plus 8 equals zero. So x equals 4 or minus 2, but it says it intersects the positive axis, so it's not minus 2, x equals 4. So now all you do is you've got, you've got dy by dx here now. So all you do is you sub in x equals 4, y equals 0, and you should end up with minus 3. Okay, so it says find the equation to the normal of the curve at p in your form, you know, uh, ax plus by equals c. So you've got the coordinates of p now. We've been told that, that the, the coordinates, what we worked out is 4 and 0. That's where p lies at. And we worked out our gradient of the curve at this point. So imagine you've got this wiggly curve here, uh, and the gradient here is minus 2 over 3, 3 over 2. So if they want the normal, it's going to be then. It passes through p. So our new gradient, the gradient of this curve is going to be 2 thirds. So then all you do is you slap, because it goes through p, you use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, and you just slap the numbers in. So y minus 0 equals 2 thirds x minus 4. So 3y equals 2x minus 8. Three. They want it as ax plus by. So it's going to be 2x minus 3y equals 8. It says given that px equals 125x cubed plus 150x squared plus 55x plus 6, use the factor theorem to prove that that is a factor of p. So what this implies is that this has to equal 0. One of these factors has to equal 0. So this means that 5x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals minus 1 fifth. You do f of minus 1 fifth, and that should equal 0. So if you do that, lo and behold, it equals 0. So therefore, since f minus 1 over 5 equals 0, 5x plus 1 is a factor. That's what factor theorem says. Okay, so now it says factorize px completely, algebraic division. So 1, 2, 5, x cubed plus 150x squared plus 55x plus 6. And we're dividing it by 5x plus 1. Bloody hell. So divide, multiply, subtract. So 125 divided by 5. So that gives you 25x squared. And then you times it by this and subtract. So 25, so 20, 25x squared times 5x is 125x cubed. And then we're going to do, so 25, so that's going to be plus 25x squared. So if we do all of that, we get 0 plus, so 150 minus 25, 1 to 5x squared plus 55x plus 6. Next, we divide this by the 5x, so 125 divided by 5, so that's going to be plus 25x. Subtract everything, so that's going to be, um, so that's, so you're minusing 25 times 5, so it's going to be 1 to 5x squared. 25x times 1 is plus 25x, and then you plus 6, so you carry all of that down. So as so you carry everything down, so it's going to be 0x squared, uh, 55 minus 25 is 30, so plus 30x plus 6. And then 5 into 30, that's 6x here. So that's not 6x, it's just 6, sorry. 6 times that, so that's 30x times by the 1 plus 6, so that gives you 0, and they factorize that. So now we're left with 25x squared plus 25x plus 6. Then we need to factorize this, so this is just a quadrata, you can use your calculator, you can do whatever method works for you. So 25, 25, 6, it gives you two brackets, so you should have, you should get 5x plus 2 and 5x plus 3, and then obviously we had our other one from before, 5x plus 1, bang and done. Okay, so it says hence prove that um, 250n cubed plus 300n squared plus 110n plus 12 is a multiple of 12 when it's a positive whole number. So they've doubled this whole thing. So we factorize the other one completely. And this is this is two times the previous one. So we can write this in, in its factorized form. So it's going to be 5n plus 1, um, 5n plus 2, and then 5n plus 3. But we multiplied the whole thing by 2. So we've got that. Okay, there are three consecutive numbers, which means they have a multiple of 3. And they must also have a multiple of 2, because if you think about it, all th if you, three consecutive numbers are always divisible by... Th the multiplication of three consecutive numbers is always divisible by 3 and 6. So 6 times 7 times 8 
is 336, which is divisible by 3 and 6. I don't know, like um, 21 times 22 times 23 is divisible by 6 and so on. So that means that they have a multiple of 3 and 6. But because they've got this extra 2 on it as well, they've also got a multiple of 2. That, so therefore, you know, it's 3 times 6 times 2 is 12. And there you go. Okay, the curve C is defined, but T is greater than 0 by these parametric equations, and they're shown in the curve in this diagram. So it says, find the gradient of C at the point where it intersects the positive x-axis. So x equals t squared plus t, and y equals 4t squared minus t cubed. So we're going to work out the gradient by differentiating both of these first. So dx by dt equals 2t plus 1, and dy by dt equals 8t, uh, 8t, 8t minus 3t squared. Right, so that means that, so basically whenever you want a dy by dx, it doesn't matter if it's dt, whatever, right? You want, to have it, you want to have it in such a way that you have dy by dt or whatever it is times dt by dx, because then the dt's cancel out and you've got dy by dx. So that means that we're going to end up with uh, dy by dt, so 8t squared, so 8t minus 3t squared over 2t plus 1. Cool. So now it says we're looking at when it intersects the positive x-axis, which is here. So that means that y equals 0. So 4t squared minus t cubed equals 0. 4t squared equals t cubed. 4t equals t squared. So in this case, 4t minus t squared equals 0. So t minus, so 4 minus t equals 0. So t can either equal 0 or it can equal 4. In this case, obviously, it's 4 because we're looking for this point here. So then all you do is you sub t into dy by dx, and let's see what that gets us. So the t is 4 in this case, which gives you minus 16 over 9. So the area enclosed by c in the x-axis is given by this area here. So c in the x-axis is that area. So this is find the value of b. So a equals 0 to b y dx. So obviously b is just slapping in 4 into t squared plus t. So t squared plus t equals 4 squared plus 4, which is 20. So it says that use the substitution y equals 4t squared minus t cubed to show that this integral is that. So we've been asked, so we've got 0 for y dx. And they want it to become a dt. So whenever you're doing integration by substitution, you need to replace the dx with the d whatever it ends up being. We've been told in the question that x equals t squared plus t. So dx by dt equals 2t um, plus 1. So therefore, dx equals 2t plus 1 dt. Sorry, and that's it. The integral of 0 to 4, y, 2t plus 1 dt. And they've told us to substitute y for 4t squared minus t cubed. So now we've got the integral of 0 for 4t squared minus t cubed, 2t plus 1 dt. And now all we have to do is expand that. So 0 for you would get 8t cubed plus 4t squared minus 2t to the 4 minus 2 cubed dt. And then if you simplify that, you get 0 for 4t squared plus 7t cubed minus 2t to the power of 4dt. Whenever you're integrating by substitution, you can't mix variables. So you can't have like y equals something x and then have a dt here. You can see that they replaced this dx by dt and the y's obviously become t's. So you need to figure out a way that links dx to dt. The only way you can do that is by looking at this and differentiating that because that gives you dx by dt. So then you can rearrange that to get dt and then you do the rest. And then it says find the value of a, just slap the numbers in and you can do the rest. Okay, so it says show that sine x minus sine x cos 2x is roughly 2x cubed. So we need to use these small angle approximations because it's telling you for small values of x. We need to use our small angle approximation. So sine x is roughly x. And we, we can see in the formula book that like cos x would roughly equal 1 minus x squared over 2. But this is cos 2x. So all you do is you replace every single x or theta you see with a 2x instead. So cos 2x would roughly be 1 minus 2x squared over 2. So now this equation becomes x minus x, 1 minus 2x squared over 2. That becomes x minus x plus 2x cubed over 2. That 
and then obviously these cancel out and you're left with two. So it says, hence, show that the area between the graph and this equation, y equals the square root of 8 sine x minus sine x plus 2x, uh, with the equation blah, 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 positive x axis and the line x equals 0 for 2, 5 could be approximated as this, where m and n are integers to be found. In the question above, we've said that that's roughly 2x cubed, so now we can say that y roughly equals the square root of 8 times 2x cubed. So that must mean that y equals the square root of 16x cubed. They're going for the positive axis and the line x equals 0 0.25, so we're going from 0 to 0 0.25. Okay, so now we've got this scenario, we can rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of x cubed. So that gives you an integral of 0 to 0 0.25. The square root of 16, 4 times the um, square root of x cubed. I could pull this factor out, so we get... 4 times 0, 0 0.25, and then I'm going to rewrite this in terms of its power, so x to 3 over 2 dx, and then you can integrate that. You get 4, 2x to the 5 over 2 divided by 5, because obviously you add 1 to the power divided by the new power, it's from 0 0.25 to 0, and then if you do all of that, blah blah blah, you should get uh, 2 to the minus 2 times 5 to the minus 1. You just put the numbers in, you can do that. Explain why this is not a suitable substitution for that. I mean, 0 0.1 is not small, so it doesn't work. So it says, explain how this may be approximated by this for suitable values of a and b. So we've said before that 6.4 and 6.3 are not really like small numbers. We can't really use this. We need to think of ways that we can get this to be smaller. So if you think about it, sine and cos are periodic, so they do this, right? So this 6.4, like, you know, whatever, right, might be like this far along the, the, um, along the graph. So what we could do is we could probably take away 2 pi from them and make them small numbers. So a would equal 6.4 minus 2 pi, which is 0 0.01168. And then b would be 6.3 minus 2 pi, which equals 0 0.0168. Now, if you see, those are pretty small numbers, so we can use them instead and use that as an approximation.